keynote by Brock Pierce. DeFi continues to conquer the digital space. Let's discuss future trends and driving concepts. With Brock Pierce, member, board of directors, SRAX. Hello, Dubai. This is my first trip out of the United States in over a year, and I'm glad to be here. This is clearly where the action is. As you just heard, people are coming here to visit, and they're staying. They're not leaving. And that's happening because of the quality of life combined with the opportunity and uh, Dubai clearly is, uh, is one of the big beneficiaries. I think I heard that there's been 44% GDP growth. Uh, pretty astounding considering everything that's happened here. And just a, a, a shout out to the uh, that last uh, fireside chat. I'd like to you know, express some gratitude to, to Tim Draper. Um, I started a venture fund called Blockchain Capital, which was the first fund dedicated to investing in this sector back in 2013. And Tim Draper was one of our large LPs and wrote me all of uh, my reference letters to future LPs. I'm also an LP in Tim Draper's fund. And so when people ask, does it make sense in your asset allocation to participate in these types of vehicles, I clearly believe the answer is yes. I think that you ultimately want to have access to the underlying assets, let's call it Bitcoin, but having some exposure to funds is a useful thing because you then have the ability to talk to GPs to get access to the insights that will make you a better, smarter investor. Uh, if, if possible, by a show of hands, uh, how many of you are yield farming? Okay. Uh, I tend to give speeches that are very, call it motivational. I chose to, uh, to get into facts and figures, recognizing that this is a, a, a financial hub and also a place that is very interested in, call it international trade and settlement systems. And one of my gifts is I'm able to take complex ideas and distill them down into simple, concise, easy to understand sort of sound bites. And so I want to quickly just walk us through a little bit of what's going on in the DeFi or decentralized finance market and what's driving it. You know, why, are, why is this happening? So in its simplest form, decentralized finance is a system by which financial products become available on a public decentralized blockchain network, making them open to anyone to use rather than going through middlemen like banks or brokerages. If you have your money in a bank, these are typically the, uh, the interest rates that you're receiving. You know, in some cases it's negative, but typically it's sub 1%. If you're lending out your money in a decentralized finance market, you're looking at 5 to 15% on those same dollars. Sub 1%, call it 10%. An order of magnitude difference. And in many instances, these can be securitized loans. With these sorts of numbers, you're like, why would anyone put their money in a bank? So why is this happening? How can this be? This doesn't make sense, does it? But it does if you start to understand how the financial system works, right? You've got a, a lender, or in this case, a depositor. You're putting money in a bank. The bank is then lending that money out. People are borrowing it, receiving it. And they're having to cover all of that overhead. You know, the retail banking facilities, all of those employees, all of those commissions. And what you're seeing in a decentralized finance market is lenders 
giving money directly to borrowers and the lender receiving all of the economics. It's as simple as that. You're watching massive efficiency get created in the lending markets. And you're cutting out all of that expense that exists in your traditional financial sector. Very compelling. Right now, over $58 billion, as of today, are currently locked up in decentralized financial owns. And this is a relatively new market that clearly has been growing rapidly. And it's because these numbers are so compelling. Almost too good to be true, which is why I wanted to point out why this is. You know, how can this be? It's driving that efficiency. And there's a lot of other substantial benefits that come out of this. Clearly, those returns are driving the participation and the adoption. But this also has the potential to drive financial inclusion, which is something that's good for the world. There are still a massive number, four and a half billion people that are on or underbanked. These financial tools are creating ubiquitous financial participation or inclusion, giving everyone on the planet with a cell phone access. And not just access to your traditional sort of financial services, but financial services that currently provide returns of an order of magnitude and might allow you to borrow money that you might not be able to borrow otherwise. Micro loans, potential remittance. You know, in a place like the UAE, you have a lot of migrant workers coming here that have to send money back home. These are tools that will allow them to do that faster and cheaper and also potentially get them access to loans in their home country and access to great rates to the extent that they have savings that they can put out in small numbers. If we were going to re-architect Maslow's hierarchy of needs today, you know, what are the things that you need? You know, there's this American concept of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. What are the things that you need to be able to pursue and live a happy life? In this day and age, you need access to the internet, you need a cell phone, and you need access to financial services. Without these tools, the likelihood of ever achieving success in your life are like that of winning the lottery. And so this is one of the things that's so exciting about what's happening here. It's not just the financial returns. Hopefully this has provided you with an insight that helps you understand why this is happening and the potential for positive impact to impact the lives of billions of people. As I like to say, a billionaire to me is not someone with a billion dollars, but someone who's positively impacting the lives of a billion people and everyone that is helping to make this dream a reality, you know, has the potential to do that now. My name is Brock Pierce. Thank you very much for having me.